A huge severe weather event is expected over the next few days across the United States with all hazards of severe weather being possible, including significant damaging winds, very large hail, and tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country this morning. And we have a line of intense thunderstorms right now moving across parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas, mostly with damaging winds, but some embedded tornadoes will be possible throughout the morning hours as this rumbles across eastern Oklahoma and Arkansas. And that will eventually move into areas like Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Missouri, Illinois, and even back into Georgia throughout the late morning and afternoon hours with more damaging winds and tornadoes being a possibility. And there is a chance as soon as the next few hours that we could be going live on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed and make sure you click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. After these complex of thunderstorms moves into the Ohio and Tennessee valleys today, we are expecting another big threat of severe weather tomorrow across the southern plains with all hazards of severe weather on the table and tomorrow has a relatively high ceiling where we could even see strong tornadoes. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days and we'll begin with today which is Saturday and we have a large enhanced risk of severe weather in place from eastern Oklahoma back into Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama and Mississippi. Slight risk of severe weather also across the southern plains back into the mid-Atlantic and a marginal threat that goes back into Texas and as well as New Mexico. All hazards of severe weather will be on the table today including including damaging winds, which will be numerous throughout the morning and afternoon hours, which is already ongoing in Oklahoma and Arkansas, and that will continue as that moves towards the Dixie Alley. Large hail is also a possibility, but by no means is this really the main concern. I think hailstones will be ranging from quarters up to maybe golf balls this afternoon and also late morning. And then the tornado threat for right now is on the low side of things. we got a large 2% tornado risk that is currently in place across most of Arkansas and then back into Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, where a couple of tornadoes will be a possibility. I'm not super sold on today's tornado threat. I think the greatest threat really has been over the last few hours and will continue throughout about 8 to 9 in the morning. It may rejuvenate as we go into the early afternoon across parts of the Dixie Alley, but it does not look to be super duper significant. It would just be tornadoes embedded in our line of thunderstorms. And then as we go into Sunday, our risk of severe weather is expected to be rather significant across the central and southern plains and even along the east coast. Two different threats here. Back over on the east coast, we're looking at isolated damaging winds, large hail, and maybe a brief tornado with the remnants of the storm system that we are watching for today. And then back over in the Southern Plains, we got a large enhanced risk of severe weather in Texas and Oklahoma, where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table, including very large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. And I would not rule out a strong tornado or two, but it's going to depend on the storm mode across this region. So again, damaging winds expected to be significant. We have a hatched area for damaging winds here across the Southern Plains, where damaging winds could exceed 80 miles per hour tomorrow. Make sure you're hatching down trampolines and protecting loose lines items. Very large hail is also in play here from about Kansas City back into the Southern Plains just outside there of Oklahoma City and also near Wichita Falls where hail could be as large as four to four and a half inches in diameter and then a few tornadoes are likely anywhere from about St. Louis all the way back into the Southern Plains including the Dallas Fort Worth area, Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls and also near Amarillo in Texas and then there's also a small two percent tornado risk in place back over in the mid-Atlantic. I do think if we get discrete supercells and it looks more favorable that we'll at least see a few of those. I think a 10 percent hatch tornado risk is definitely in play back over in southwestern Oklahoma and also in parts of Texas. So here's the timing for today. A line of thunderstorms will continue to push through Arkansas throughout the morning hours. May clip southern Missouri. Main concern will be damaging winds and then eventually once this gets to Memphis around 10 to 11 o'clock, this may re-intensify and produce a few more tornadoes across parts of Tennessee, Mississippi, and as well as Alabama as we go into the very late morning and early afternoon. This is about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Storms will be pushing in the direction of Nashville, also across Kentucky Kentucky and as well as northern Alabama, where all hazards will continue, but damaging winds and tornadoes being the main concern. By around four o'clock or so, these storms are going to be pushing into the Atlanta metro area and also moving to eastern Tennessee. And then by five to six o'clock, the line of storms will begin to fall apart as it moves over the Appalachian Mountains with just isolated damaging winds and maybe a brief tornado being left over. The good news is, is on Sunday, we're not expecting a whole lot of severe weather, but if you're back over here near St. Louis or even across parts of the Ozarks, there could be some isolated damaging winds, hail, and maybe be even a brief tornado. Now back over in the Southern Plains, we are expecting a very active Sunday, I think, across the board. But for today, a few supercells are possible. They could fire up right around Dallas, Fort Worth this afternoon. Main threat for today will be large hail and damaging winds, but an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out out of those storms. As we go into Sunday morning, things are pretty quiet. During the early afternoon, it's also pretty quiet. But by four o'clock, we're going to have an eruption of storms back over in the Texas Panhandle and Western Oklahoma. Damaging winds and hail will be the biggest concerns an 
initially, and then tornadoes will probably start to become more of a concern as this becomes more of a line of storms. Now, if we have any discrete supercells out there, there could be strong tornadoes. It's definitely in play, but for right now, it looks like this is going to be a very linear setup on Sunday with a significant swath of damaging winds as we go into the late afternoon and evening hours on Sunday, and this will barrel across the Dallas-Fort Worth area during the late evening, and then by the overnight hours, it'll start to weaken as it moves towards Louisiana, Arkansas, and then the remnants of that will likely go into parts of the southeast on Monday, and then on Monday, it looks like we might have a slight break, at least from most of the significant severe weather. In the southeast, there will be a little bit of severe weather. The high plains, we could have a few supercells as well with damaging winds, hail, and tornadoes, but overall, the chances of significant severe weather for Monday do appear at least to be low at this time. And then beyond Sunday, our weather pattern is expected to stay very active across the United States. We are going to have a large-scale troughing feature come out of Canada as we go into Monday into Tuesday. This will help to bring the potential for some maybe isolated mesoscale convective systems in the Midwest if we have enough moisture. And then beyond Tuesday, that storm system will move out. We'll likely continue to see severe weather across the high plains as there will still be enough troughing for an isolated shortwave trough or two during the middle and end of the week, which should bring again some isolated scattered severe weather in the high plains. And then by around mid-June, things get a lot more uncertain. There may be a large ridge that builds in the high plains. That could prevent some severe weather, but I do think we're going to see the return of at least one, maybe two significant storm systems at some point during the middle of June. That might be geared towards June 15th to June 20th. And also, I do ex anticipate that the severe weather threat in general will start to lift further to the north during the mid to late portions of June. That's very typical for this time of the year. We are still seeing severe weather in the southern plains, but it's only a matter of time until we start to see our jet stream lift way off to the north, which would allow for a lot of more of our severe weather events to be geared towards the central and northern plains, the Midwest, and the Ohio Valley. So again, it's only a matter of time until that happens. For right now, we still have significant severe weather in the southern plains, but I think we only have a couple more weeks until the jet stream really starts to lift off to the north. So to put this in more simplistic terms, this is the future radar for the next few days. As we go into Monday, that low pressure system will spin across the Midwest, scattered severe storms possible from the southern plains back into the southeast. On Tuesday, we'll be still talking about some showers and thunderstorms. I think the greatest concentration of that will be back over in parts of Texas and Oklahoma. And then by the middle of the week, scattered showers and thunderstorms will continue across the high plains, but we may get a break from significant severe weather during the middle and end portions of this week. And then by the weekend is when we may start to see some severe weather return back over in the high plains if we get a trough ejection. But overall, things don't look too, too crazy right now for the middle of June. I still think we're going to continue to see a lot of mesoscale convective days, uh, which basically means we should start to see some more mesoscale features like dry lines initiate supercells, even though the GFS model isn't really indicating anything that significant right now. I do think at least over the next few days, we're going to start to see computer models picking up on some of these small, more small scale severe weather events that could happen, which can still be significant in the month of June. So definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Click the bell icon down below so you're notified with the latest updates. We will keep you posted with the latest on all the crazy storm systems that are coming. But at least some good news right now is that it looks like we may have a slightly more quiet period of time here as we go later into this upcoming work week. But at least for now, it is expected to be pretty active throughout the weekend. As always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We may be live as early as 8 to 9 in the morning today, so make sure you're subscribed. And if nothing happens today for whatever reason that is live streamable, then our next video will be tomorrow morning, and then we'll have another live stream tomorrow afternoon and evening. So stay tuned, and we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.